safe as a step. First half, it wasn't great in possession, and um, we did as well, so it was pretty similar to the, the game the other day against them. Um, but second half was much better, you know, we played with a lot more confidence, created a lot more chances, and got the goals going forward. So it's, you know, it's pretty simple for us, we want to get in behind them. Uh, what you were trying to do, I'm guessing? Like I said, the, the holding run was catching us off offside a lot in the first half, such a high line. Um, but the, we got the chances from it. Marcus, is, um, with Benny McCarthy coming in, is he difference to the way that you make your runs and your minutes? Um, you know, to have them attack minded coaches, you know, within the within the squad is is huge for us forward players. Um and yeah, it's just day in, day out, you know, we're thinking about scoring goals, um rather than, you know, the, the other the other bits of the game yeah. which are important as well. You, you you seem to be on it, you seem to have a a goal in your head that you need to hit that nobody else knows about but moment. Yeah, I think, you know, my, my aim is just to get back to enjoying my enjoying my football and you know at the minute I am so I can't complain, you know, it's there's not goals, isn't it? It's all about yeah. the goals. It's like, between out on the left or going through the middle. Do you like that versus It's my me play anyway. Like when I'm on the left, I make a lot of runs into that position anyway, so I just I, I try and end up in the face of the goal and you know that's where the goals are scored so that's where I want to be. With the ball in the wing. A lot of it's with the game back to goal, I need to improve uh, uh, a lot on that. Um, I think I'm all right with bringing others into the game, but when I, when I have to hold it and I'm the, the lone one up there, that's something that I need to work on. Just to, uh, <laughs> I don't think what, you need to tell what, him what that you're Danish, Peter. When, when a player like Christian comes into the, to the game, a scrappy game today, and then all of a sudden, well, well, we're just running him. Uh, in the passes, and for me, it's the calmness. Like, you know, up front, we're always making runs at a high tempo. We need someone on the ball that can just slow it down and, you know, someone that can see the pitches and play the passes and... You know, his, his technical ability, same with Bruno, when they're on the ball, we just have to give them options, you know, we have to make two free runs um, and we have to have that belief that they'll find us and, you know, we, I think we have we have had that this season. Uh, not every game it's come off, but the, the, the more times that we make the runs and keep giving them options, the more likely it's going to come off, so. I have to ask you this question as well. Um, I don't know, has it has it been a, a nervous week? Have you been in constant communication with England's staff? It was just this morning, you know. Um, for me, the, the focus is is United. You know, I think if you're performing at United, then it's going to always be around the corner. Um, you know, I'm obviously really pleased to be to be back in the mix and back with the squad um, and close off this this chapter um, with a win on on Sunday. Cool. In the end, like Peter mentioned, that the, the midfield players are picking out the correct passes. You know, Marcus is always going to make those runs. Martial was making lots of runs as well, and I just think it was just energy was better, uh, quality was better. Villa did great to get back in the game a couple of times, but no, it's, it's it's all, it's all. he needs to have a position that he can fully focus on. Nail down, yeah. So, so when he gets into the, the number nine position, he does really get in. And if he misses Dion, it looks like it isn't affecting him. His head isn't going down. Your confidence in his own ability to keep getting into those goal scoring positions. If he misses, it doesn't bother him. He's full of confidence. You know, his, his fitness looks incredible. I think he looks even slimmer than he was before. He looks faster as well. And I think going into the World Cup, he is in the best condition you can think. We've got the manager coming. It's really very different second half to first half. It's true, but uh, I wouldn't say um, first half, he controlled the game. And um, by good pressing, we were missing the pass. We kept runs behind, but then one step too late, we passed the ball behind. 
And so we missed a lot of opportunities in the first half. And then in the last part, I think the last seven, eight minutes, we were also sloppy on the ball. We kept some uh, corners against. So the uh, halftime, we said, keep the pressing, but um, be more direct, pass the ball behind their defense. And then we proud of the team that they could do that after Sunday's defeat, after two times we were down. So we are happy tonight. So they're behind quicker that uh, in the second half. I think to move the ball, I mean, in, in the first half, it was a slower game. The second half, because you moved it quicker, Villa just couldn't get into those defensive positions quickly in um, centre half and, and full back. And I think that's where you had your joy. And with, you're always going to get chances, aren't you? Ah, they have the capabilities to do that. And, but also Bruno, uh, Canaccio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, from the, from the, out of the second wave, the second line uh, with Scott, with his runs. Uh, they have the capabilities to get behind and uh, they did it well. Came on, that gave you more control as well. Yeah, that was on purpose, yeah. Who the problem in the first half, I think, I said, uh, the problem in the first half was that we had too many touches and we missed the moment to pass the ball behind. And that's why we bring Christian Eriksen on the pits. I think your team, you know, you go down twice and then you get that Man United spirit here at Old Trafford. We are not going to give up. And you just kept going and going and going. And Happy with that resilience. And that's what we need and that we have to show um, every game. That's why I was uh, so disappointed. Uh, I, I was really mad on Sunday with the performance from us because we didn't fight. We were uh, sloppy, uh, especially in the defensive discipline. And that cannot be. Uh, a United player always has to show 100% discipline in the defending work. It is uh, the week after next week. One, one game left. Um, to this league, into this country, playing these games, and they're coming thick and fast. You learn. What, what are your experiences from, from, from this period here? Game, it's an intense game. And so, uh, what we have to do better, um, we have to play football in a higher intensity. And I think we make a step in the right direction. But also, on the ball, as you said, first half, we can uh, better in control. Drag an opponent out, and then find the moments where we can speed up. Still a long way to go. Finally, at World Cup, help you. Then, as a coach, you've been playing twice a week virtually. It give you a, a bit of breathing space to. That is what we uh, continue to do: um, analyze, uh, reflect on our performances. But of course, now you have a little bit more time, too, and we will see where we can improve. Uh, we will have a, a good, good reflection and uh, where we can improve. Uh, to see that spirit come in now and again. It's not happening every game. It's some games where you think, whoa, 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 this is no good. But you see that that you, you don't want to give in. You have responsibilities to everyone here. 72,000 on a Thursday night here today. Uh, millions watching. And, and we haven't seen that as much in the last sort of three or four years. There's been some mishaps, yeah, I have to say yeah, that. Yeah. Brighton here, Brentford away, Man City away. Wasn't great. But today the fight back was brilliant. Blur have gone out. Um, but there are positives for them. Yeah. But, well, you but, know, there's always two sides to the coin. This is or Fred misses the ball. Harry Maguire is out of position, and the warning's been there because that exactly scored precisely the same goal on Sunday. So they they know the defenders know what's going to happen yeah. next. This is a 48th minute. It's the same minute yeah. they scored yeah. on Sunday. When I'm watching this, I, I'm thinking, what is happening? Have you not learned? And three days ago. And then, of course, the recovery. So, what do you what do you think in Manchester United recover immediately? In myself, <laughs> but it's so happy that it was... that's exactly what Eric Ten Hag was yes. saying to us. Isn't it? They went from the left back all the way across to is there checking to see if anybody in an Aston Villa shirt is going to switch off. They go, they go, they go, then they go quick. And so out. Marsh yells in, and what I like about Marsh, he works so hard to get into that goal scoring position. Uh, by the way, Marsh Yell works so hard. <laughs> Always worked very hard, and that's when he doesn't score. Tradition, he worked really hard, got his rewards. If he can keep doing that, he'll get his goals. A few minutes after that triple. Brilliant tonight. Far post. The defense. But what disappoints it in the goal? It's backing off. Not one of them should be from earlier. But again, it was brilliant play from, from Aston Absolutely. Villa. Defense. I, I think we can conclude that Absolutely. the Man United defence at the moment is a little bit insecure. Players probably don't know if 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 they're playing or if they're in yeah. the defence for or, or just covering for somebody. For, for the first goal, Unai Emery has options as well. He plots going forward. I think it's down to Unai Emery now to to figure out what players play well 
during what part of the game, who plays well together. Is it one up top? Is it two up top? Is it two and one? They've just He's got to figure that out, and I'm sure he will, um, formations. And we've seen 25 minutes, 30 minutes of Villa tonight stunned United. They've shown a bit of resilience as well. But uh, they had sparks in the game in the second half that set the crowd alight, alight and the crowd got involved. Quality to strength. It just jumps over Tyrone Mings. There's your strength. Get your space to strike the ball. That chance would have been blasted by him. That's a lot of chances by just blasting the ball. Uh, he missed one today as well, where he blasted the white. He was so composed about that. And I liked what he said about, you know, someone like Christian Eriksen, when he comes on, what it gives him. It gives him calm. It gives him time yeah. to think, to run what he wants. And, you know, as a striker, you, you make those runs. You make a lot of runs where you're not involved. Trust the players around you to give you the ball now and again it must give you so much confidence i feel sorry for robin olsen i have to say he's swedish <laughs> <laughs> he's got a danish mother and a swedish father and he, so tonight he was swedish after this <laughs> no, I, actually he, I, he was very very impressive with his feet the way that he was uh, you know building up the game he, he was so uh, calm on the ball Much better for the goalkeeper that your defenders are actually just staying, covering. Some so, more problems yeah. for a goalkeeper. You, well, you see very, very yeah. good shot. I'm absolutely sure. It's, it's, it's so difficult, though, for a defender. Because it's in difficult not to do it. The thing about it is if you work at it, and I know that Pete did it with his defenders, I mean, lunging in, Pete never liked it. However, as a defender, all you want to do is stop the ball getting anywhere near your keeper. Goal in the Champions League again. That ball. But Scott, my Tommy, just has... He's a, I think it's absolutely brilliant to see a young man here uh, to put it good on Sunday. I have to say, I don't, don't think he had a good Look at this. Look at how he's stretching. And it's understandable that Garnacho will be... In, you know, he's, I mean, every player has a bad game at some point, but at that age, you are going to expect some inconsistencies. Still figuring out the pace of the game, being at United, the, the quality of player that he's around as well. He's still figuring out where he fits in. He's got a lot of quality. He, he's just got to bed in. Bed yourself in, find your place, and then earn the right to get your shirt. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long. Michael and Dion Dublin, who action tonight in Manchester United and Aston Villa. That's with the United hats on at this point, as they are now. Yeah. Of the other teams that'll be joining them, looking out for. So, 10 Premier League sides in there. We've all ball number nine, the two Manchester sides there. Number 16. In the Football League, we've got some in ball number five. Also keep an eye on Gillingham of League Two, uh, Trafford. So with that, we'll get you uh, drawing out the teams that'll be playing at home. You'll be going first, and then Dion, you'll be... It's number 15, that is Wolves. Win of Julian Lopetegui. And they will be hosting League Two. Um, so League Two, Gillingham. Trips and Molyneux to look forward to. Right, Dean. It's another Premier League side at the wrong end of the table. It's Southampton. And they will be hosting League One Lincoln. So, Nottingham Forest into the Hassle Bournemouth. An all Premier League tie at Manchester City will be hosting the current holders. Liverpool. Do so these teams return from the World Cup as well? It doesn't get much more interesting know, yeah. than that. Between Manchester United out of the hat next. Soon, Cubney's Burnley will be going to Old Trafford. Kadon's yes. Leicester City. Walton Brighton. I of the round, and I don't think either side would have wanted that uh, that tie. But you know, big game. If you want to win things, you got to beat the best, haven't you? A more favourable draw against Burnley, Peter. So yes, but you know, it's still a cup competition. As you say, it's that week after the World Cup. You don't know how many players uh, have been there, the 18th in the final, if any. But uh, you know, to win this trophy, it's difficult. You got to never easy. Well, you know. Seventy-five minutes. We compete very well. The first half, defensively, we were strong and we were feeling 
good on the pitch. Needed a little bit to take more uh, calm with the ball, take their, their press. But uh, I think we were in the in the good road for the second half. Very well, different, more option to attack. And we, uh, when they scored quickly after our goals, I think uh, we needed close more our spaces between our lines, which, uh, with uh, so many different between our lines. They they had 50 minutes at the end of the match. I think better than us. Had the lead, but couldn't keep it for long enough. Uh, the last 50 minutes, we we lost uh, a little bit uh, our block, solid block. We were we were doing. We tired some some players, but I think uh, very good things. In 90 minutes, uh, I am with good things in my mind. I think we made. To the, tonight was uh, be competitive better than another match. Uh, uh, the good things uh, I will speak with the players for the next match on Sunday. Ball out from the back and be expressive with the ball. At times though tonight were there issues in doing that? Uh, we did the, the same work on, on Sunday and we really uh, took confidence for to, to try to do the, the same today, tonight. They have the same uh, style idea uh, against us, but tonight uh, we couldn't um, take more good possibilities to progress, to break their, their, their pressing. But it, and uh, I think uh, we have to, to achieve in our mind and the the good moment we, we did this tonight again then, uh, attack moment as well, and uh, only at the end minute, I think, uh, our mentality a little bit was going down. Okay? And it's the next challenge. We know uh, what is our challenge now, is be consistent, of course. But a way, I think, uh, is uh, our really challenge for the next match on, on Sunday. We did tonight, I think uh, we can add uh, in uh, our, our back and, and helping the players for, to, for uh, make better on Sunday things on the pitch. Uh, this is one of the most experienced managers or coaches in, in European football and you'd expect him to analyse a game like that. He's learned a lot how to conduct himself with, uh, with, uh, with the media. Um, he's definitely improved on that. What he's saying makes sense. Um, then some of the things you can you can agree, you can disagree. But good coaches, good managers, when they speak to the media, uh, they more than anything should speak to their players. And I heard one or two messages there to his players that he's happy with the work they do. They need to work harder. They need to be able to withstand a little bit of pressure. And he said, which is a direct message to the players. But, some man, but he's actually given us a proper tactical appraisal of what happened here tonight. A little bit more to be given from his players as well. He knows there's, there was an undercurrent in the second half where they really had a go and then when Man United came back and they sort of went, oh no, not again. So he's trying to he's trying to iron that out of his, his squad because he knows how good they can be for 20 to get over to his players. A bit more reaction from... It's excitement, a little bit of lack of concentration from the whole team. Um, but, you know, we played really good stuff tonight. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's harsh to, to go out the way we did. Yeah, you're doing around the nature of the goals that you've conceded tonight. Spoke about it, but I'm sure, obviously, we're all disappointed. Um, after taking the lead and playing some, some good football and um, frustrating them a lot, um, yeah, it's a, it's a shame. You have uh, about the break and what he might do, five of Villa's squad are going to the World Cup. Every squad to work with, actually. Yeah, listen, just trying to try and tell the players what you expect of them it's going to give the players a great opportunity to get to know the manager it's another pre-season yeah and as, as a person as well Chavez, it's nice to get to, to have a chat with the manager around the training ground not just always kicking the ball and stand there do this have a chat with the manager find out uh, back to the carabao cup we've got the fourth round after the world cup now if you're any of the other clubs in 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 this draw now that has that has opened it up even more you know arsenal went last night totti went 
last night. I mean, the obvious club to look at, Peter, is Newcastle and go, right, on there. I'm thinking, Dion, don't put, uh, don't pick out number 16. <laughs> don't pull confidence. Uh, so that's a team to avoid for sure. I have to remember, one of one of Liverpool, Man City will still be in there. That is going to be in there. So there's still potential for a, a very, very strong field of, uh, of, of teams. But as we've seen tonight, I, I mean, Oh, we've seen over the last three days here, yeah, anything can happen. Because it is a, t a competition where managers are playing younger players, or players are not playing a lot. So I actually feel it's really interesting to watch because you see something different. And today it was wonderfully scrappy in a way. Because what we get from this competition. Yeah, it'll be England as world champions oh, oh, oh. as well. Who knows? <laughs> Sorry, Peter. Not you